Welcome back to Element 14. My name is Lorraine Underwood and this week I'm going to show you a project that I've finally started to make after thinking about it for about three or four years. The project is a programmable RGB LED that I've called Solus. Before I show you Solus, let me show you some shiny RGB LEDs. So here's some RGB LEDs that you can buy. This is one of the first um, RGB LED that I ever played with. It's called the Glowbug and it came with a uh, codebug, which I don't think they sell Glowbugs anymore. They might sell the codebug. Uh, then there was the Crumble Sparkle. Uh, so the idea with these holes is that you crock clip your from your data source into here. So you got your data in and then you chain uh, the next one along. So you got data out and then you got power and ground as well. And we have the Katronic Zip LED. I quite like this one. So it's got the in and out data, but it's also got two sets of uh, ground and power. And it's just, I just like the shape of it. <laughs> but same idea, same basic idea. You've got a crock clip in there. Uh, then we have another zip from Katronic, but this is a circle, not chainable but they do have smaller strips that are chainable. So you see there's no out. Uh, it's just got two grounds and data in there. And this is the Adafruit NeoPixel. So they come as a flat board and you solder on the pins yourself. And again, it's chainable. You got data in, data out, and you use your jumper wires to connect it to your data source. Then we have the strip itself. So you can get these quite a lot of places. This one's not got the waterproof backing on it, which I don't know why I took off, but it's just a big strip of NeoPixel. So it's a bit kind of flexible. And I think this one's a, a meter long. But these are the bare lights. So there's no, there's no code here. There's no uh, computer. You add a computer to these and any computer, which is great, like Arduino, Raspberry Pi, Microbit, any of the Adafruit boards will control NeoPixels. What I wanted with Solis was a really, really simple, chainable, NeoPixel system that included the computer. So something this size, but the computer was on here. I had this idea like two, three years ago, and I've seen nothing like that. People kind of go too far. You know, they add um, all kinds of bells and whistles to these boards. And I just want a single RGB LED that you can code and chain to other RGB LEDs. And that's where I came up with the idea for Solis. So Solis then, it's a single RGB LED. You don't have to solder it, it's already on the board. Um, you code the board through uh, micro USB. Eventually I would like a battery, but I know that's gonna be difficult. So let's leave that kind of <laughs> over here with a question mark. I want to chain the RGB LEDs together. So the idea is that you have yours, you code yours and it lights up, but then you can connect it to your friends and they can interact somehow. So maybe if yours is flashing red and blue, it overtakes your friends and their flashes red and blue. Or maybe yours is red and theirs is blue. And when you combine them, they both go purple. Uh, or maybe it's random, you know, maybe it's like potluck of what happens when you start chaining them together. Uh, another option is obviously you just treat this as another light. So you could just make a chain and you start going red, 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 red along the chain. Um, so the connection here is important. It kind of needs to give each one kind of like control of its own, but also to be part of a set. I also want this to be really easy to programming. So I'm thinking kids, uh, blocks, not any kind of text-based programming. So we're talking about kids who can read and write. So not a very low age, so about five or six years old. So the reason I didn't create Solus for a long time is that one, I am not a PCB designer. I have no idea how to make this with micro USB and connectors and the battery especially really stumped me because um, no one does batteries really well safe rechargeable batteries that you don't remove from the board and swallow because <laughs> oh size wise this is also like the size of your hand like smaller than your hand because i really want it to be um wearable but also this bit here was also a bit of a, a stumbling block for me it was kind of a, a wall i couldn't continue with the project I couldn't even begin to start it without knowing what 
this is? What is this connection that you can connect boards together, that they can work independently, but also together? Luckily, the answer came to me at my day job. And that's a new module system that Microsoft Research have created called JackDack. Here are some JackDack modules then. So this is a button and we've got a slider here. This is an accelerometer and then you've got your NeoPixel strip. So you can see these have a JackDack connector on either end so they can be chainable. Not all of them have that, but these four examples do. So you've got your um, JackDack cable, this one's green, and you just plug it in there. Um, and then onto your board. So here's the jack adapter for the micro bit. So we can plug that in there and then your micro bit goes in there, like so. And you can add multiple boards onto the other connectors. Here's another board. So this is a, an RP2040 chip made onto a, a jack DAC board. It's got a USB-C connector. And you got like the boot and reset buttons there. So at my role at Lancaster University, I've been sitting in on the JackTac meetings with uh, Microsoft Research. And so I've seen these boards. They're, they're public now, but for a while they were kind of like a secret project. So it feels weird uh, talking about them finally. But I thought this is brilliant. This is exactly what I want for Solace. I want something that you can chain together really easily that's not kind of custom or expensive and be something that people are familiar with. So while JackDack's not very familiar, MakeCode is. So let me show you JackDack on MakeCode and how cool it is. So here's the MakeCode website for Microbit. We're gonna add the JackDack extension. This is all still beta um, as of January, 2022. So you might find instructions have updated and that's the library there. We're gonna just add a little in here and we're going to connect the micro bit over web USB. So the micro bit's connected and then we're going to connect it this way. Now it's to download um, the JackDAC library and to get the live simulator working, which is really cool. So you can just see um, that little part there. So that's kind of connected directly to the micro bit. So when we plug in some JackDAC modules, they should appear um, on the simulator. So I'm going to plug in this button and you'll see it here. So this is the really cool thing about JackDack. So I'm going to press it and you'll see on the simulator it's being pressed. So it's like a, a live simulator. So let's add the NeoPixel strip and that came pretty fast and we're going to kind of reverse it. So we're going to do something on the simulator and it's going to appear in real life. Uh, let me just turn the light off so you can see this a bit better. And there we are. So I love this. That's the live simulator from uh, MakeCode using JackDAC on the micro bit. So it works both ways. When I press the button, you, physically you can see this button being pressed. And when I change the lights here, they change physically the lights over there. Another really cool thing about MakeCode then is just add your blocks. So it says, oh, I see you've got a button and a pixel. Do you want those blocks? And I say yes. And then it adds them to that module menu. You should see them in here. Now we've got when that button is pressed down, let's change all those lights, lights, lights to red. And actually have to download the code now. So I press A to bring kind of control back over here, press the button and it makes the lights go red. So that's JackDack on the micro bit with the live simulator. So what I want is this, but for my board. So I need to create a kind of environment for my board um, and create the actual board itself here, which is no mean feat, <laughs> but let me show you how, you how I did that. Do you like winning free stuff? Are you an electronics hobbyist? Do you like building cool projects and winning prizes for what you build? The Element 14 community presents Project 14, the member-driven destination where you decide on the challenge. You enter projects to win monthly prizes and you vote on the winners. What are you waiting for? Join the Element 14 community so you too can enter one of our contests or submit an idea for your own. Join now!
Before I talk about how to make MakeCode for Solis, I want to say that when we chose MakeCode, it kind of helped us make our chip decision. So MakeCode only supports a certain number of processors. There's quite a few, there's a lot of choice, but being 2022, there's this huge chip shortage. So we were kind of limited on what we could choose. Uh, we've decided to go for the RP2040 uh, for three reasons. One, it does everything we need it to do. Two, it's available. And three, as you'll see, there's a MakeCode environment for the RP2040 Pico board. So we knew that it could work. Uh, we just needed to test it with Sullis. This is the website that we're trying to add our board to. So this is maker.makecode.com. And you'll see there's some jack -jack boards here as the latest ones. But there's quite a lot of other boards. So you've got like the Adafruit boards, Arduino, Sparkfun, Exynavox. Um, and this is the interesting one. This is the Pico. Um, so what I want is Sullis to appear on this list. So eventually I'm going to have to ask Microsoft to add Sullis to the list. Um, but for now, I'm going to create my own local copy of this, create Sullis, get it working, and then uh, push it back to Microsoft. Here's that website on GitHub. Um, and then you have the instructions just here of what you need and what you need to do. Um, here's my uh, local version of that maker website. And I'm trying to add Solus to here. I can't seem to do that. But when I go new, new project, and I press create, something very exciting happens. It asks you to pick your device and we scroll down. Hey, hey, it's here. It's not got a picture, but there is Solis. Remember, this is just local. <laughs> and there she is. So I'm going to show you how I made this in the code. Obviously, this is not looking pretty. It's not ready, but it's enough to test. This is our NeoPixel and it's also got an um, onboard LED here. And that's our reset button as well. This might look slightly familiar. We go back out and create another project, select a different board, um, the Pico. You'll see it looks, <laughs> it's the exact same board. <laughs> so I've uh, copied and pasted the Pico and just put like the word Solis over it <laughs> and uh, put in the RGB LED and then the onboard LED as well. So here's our Pico board um, pretending to be Solus, fake Solus, you could say. So we added uh, an LED and a NeoPixel, and then we got these running from MakeCode. Next up was to chop up a jackdack cable and connect it to fake Solus and to some modules and to another brain, so to the microbit, and get the microbit to control Solus's NeoPixel. This is all just testing. As expected, everything worked. So we were happy with our choice of the RP2040 as Solace. And it's a bit of a mess. <laughs> so here's the two buttons. We got boot and reset. The RP2040 is squished into there. This is a micro USB cable. That's a NeoPixel. And then we've got over here, the jack jack cable that's been chopped up to add a module. And again, we just tested this with MakeCode, with maker.makecode make sure that everything worked, that the chip worked with the flash, the boot and the reset buttons worked. And these are all just hardware tests because we're at the stage now where we're ready to order from the PCB manufacturer and we want to make sure all the hardware works nicely together because anything else, mostly anything else, can be fixed in software. Building the PCB is coming on really well, but I wanted to show you um, the prototype that we built kind of two years ago. So this was like Solus version zero. <laughs> um, so the idea is this is like a, a rechargeable CR2 battery and it would be sealed uh, in this case. And this is the board. So it's really thin. Uh, I needed to create this plastic here because this is USB and it's not thick enough to actually fit in a USB port. So the idea is you plug it into your computer and you would code it and you would charge the battery at the same time. Um, that was our original idea for Solus, and that we'd somehow, with chaining them together, we'd need uh, female USB-A cables, um, female to female kind of wires, which aren't easy to come by, but there it is, kind of there. You can see 
the board and the battery. Uh, and you'll notice there's no LED on it. <laughs> yeah, the idea is you'd have different hats. You'd have like a hat with three lights on it, four lights on it, and you choose um, how your hats would go on. That was like our original idea for Solis, which is uh, moved on to this kind of all-encompassing board idea. But oh my god, I'm so proud of that. <laughs> and obviously we are using um, 3D printing to imagine what it would look like. And that's what we're doing this time. So now that we've got an idea of the size of all our components, this is going to be Solis, I don't know, B2, <laughs> B1. Um, ignore the holes, they're just so I could put a, a NeoPixel in it to demonstrate how it works. So these are the jack jack connectors, we're going to have three, and the micro USB is going to stick out here. Um, but what we've been playing with is the lid, which I've not mentioned so far. Uh, Bayer LEDs, they're just very glary, they're very bright, uh, it's good to kind of diffuse them. So we want people to be able to diffuse Solace by putting a, a lid on it or like a, a leaf or a surrounding. So we started kind of coming up with some shapes. So this is our first kind of shape where you wrap it around. Um, kind of origami style. It's very difficult to do on camera, especially with this paper. <laughs> but. You put that bit in there, and the side there, and the side there, and that bit pops out, and ooh, then <laughs> it pops out again. It goes around like that, and it looks very cool when it works. But that was just kind of getting the uh, dimensions right, first of all. Then we moved on to polypropylene, and this, this is gorgeous. Let me show you, this was version one, but you can kind of see how, look how cool it is. I love these uh, side kind of curves. Um, the idea is the cables will hold it together. So like a jack back cable coming out of there will hold this together. Uh, and if I folded it right, it would also hold it together. Um, this is the final version. So those tabs got bigger, but I think I'll take them out actually. Um, can't say final version, you can never say final version because see, how sturdy this is it's even staying apart staying together when the board's not on it so once the board is in there and these are sticking out the side it's it's really solid um the best bit is obviously when the light is in so let me show you that so this is just a, a single neopixel similar size to the boards you saw previously and um, you can really see the shape of this so that's the light shining through let's see can we get some multicolors i just love this material I think it does need to be a bit kind of more shaded um, to take away that sharpness, but the way it comes out at the edges looks really good. And that's where we are so far. So we've ordered five PCBs from Seed. It's going to take about 25 days to arrive. They are assembling the board as well. While waiting for the PCBs to arrive, I'm also going to be working on the structure that the lights are going to go on, which is a, a kind of wooden acrylic tree. It's been a really f exciting few weeks uh, developing Solis. It's been something that's been inside my brain for so long. It's just so exciting seeing it out in the real world and working. <laughs> Which part do you want to see next? Which part do you want to see more of? So there's so much to this project. There's the design side, the decision making, PCB design, um, and the software development. Hopefully in my next video, I will have a fully working Solace connecting to another fully working Solace and they're talking to each other and they're sending colors to each other and it's programmable true make code. Don't forget to join me on the Element 14 community to find out more about Solace. Till next time.